the um, ATO, it's not the ATO, the government still hasn't finalised all the um, tax changes, but hopefully something will happen today. Um, so after that, we'll have um, very shortly the tax rates um, ready for the new year ahead for actual pays. Um, I will be going a little bit into fringe benefits tax, and if anybody actually um, specifically needs more information regarding fringe benefits tax, we can talk individually on it. Um, I'm not sure how many people have uh, been practiced this year of the people who are at this webinar today. The other thing we'll do is we'll look at the payment summaries and how to finalise payment summaries for getting them to the ATO and also getting out the actual documents to your employees. In the single touch payroll, we'll touch a little bit on the, um, the difference, which is the doing a finalisation and the declaration um, as opposed to what will happen to send the files by the payment summary of format. We will concentrate quite a bit on the records phone of your payroll ready for end of financial year, which most of the things that we'll be doing and covering is uh, what you should be doing on a monthly basis to make sure that everything is work going along the line as you would expect um, between your accounting system and your payroll system. All right. The first area of movie that there's going to be changes as far as PAYG, um, help and the thresholds for um, child support and um, terminations and that sort of thing. Those things will be automatically updated within the payroll system and you'll know what year you're talking about when you're actually doing any back pay or forward pay. There are a few changes also within Surrey Sacrifice and super guarantee and what is required as far as um, employers providing the graduation guarantee to their employees based on salary sacrifice. The superannuation changes, what used to be allowed was to actually um, deduct the salary sacrifice amount from the super guarantee from what I understand now is that you will actually be required to be paying super guarantee on your whole, whole wages, um, not just not um, super guarantee reduced by a salary sacrifice amount. And of course, this is something that you, um, as an employer, will need to make sure you have um, set up the right way based on what the ATO requirements are. If there are any changes, sorry, I'll go back a page. If there are any changes that are um, suiting you differently in relation to this, you will still have the option to deduct salary from sorry, sorry, deduct salary sacrifice from super guarantee tick box at the bottom of your screen. Um, but make sure you you know what you're supposed to be doing. All right. The biggest thing that you will need to do, no matter which way you are going with your end of year and the finalising your pay, is that you must have your software registered with the ATO before you can send your payment summary information to the ATO or finalise your pay for the touch payroll. This is really important. You won't be able to get the stuff to the ATO if you do not do this step. For this, you will need to have um, an OSCE which has an admin access level. And as you can see from this SBR screen, um, you will need to go to the ATO website, which is for, <coughs> pardon me, for the um, access manager, and go through the steps to actually register the software ID. Now, along the way, if any of these sections you have any specific questions, please feel free to actually send me a chat and then I will try and either answer it at the end or during the um, section that we're actually speaking about. 
Okay. Once with the single touch payroll side of things, for once you have actually switched on single touch payroll, you will need to actually continue using single touch payroll. You can't turn it on, have a try, turn it off, and then at a later date continue the process. Um, as far as I can see, most of um, the advanced users that we have been working with haven't started actually sending the end to the touch payroll information. So I am going to be in the presumption that the majority of you will actually be doing um, the finalisation of your payrolls using the of the um, non single touch payroll process. But things that you will need to be aware of for the new year I'm going to be covering as well. Okay, so things that you will need to be made aware of. You will need to have your registration. You need to make sure that all your details are correct for your company and in your employees. And you'll also need to make sure that if you have any fringe benefit tax that you need to put in, that that, is been, that has been entered and has been entered with the appropriate dates so that they will actually take place at the right and show up at the right time. The company details that need to be checked will be, as you can see from here, basically the things that you need to know have for each year anyway for the payment summary. It's no different um, for in the touch payroll as for um, payment summaries. ABN company name, phone numbers must always be valid numbers. They cannot be extension 456 or anything along those lines because it's been rejected and the system does do validation checks at the point of trying to actually upload the file so you'll have an opportunity to make those corrections. The other thing is you will need to make sure is that you have a valid person actually entered at the bottom for contact details so that the ATO has somebody to actually contact if there is any, are any queries that need to come back to the company. And hopefully these things are already set up and in place for you. Employee details, the obvious things, name, address, birth date, postcode, and contact telephone number if, if you choose to enter one in. Right. You have any special circumstances as far as tax file numbers are concerned. There are valid tax file numbers that, or dummy tax file numbers that can actually be used, which will allow us to go through as long as your selection of the tax of the tax file number position is actually matching what you've ticked and entered. So. Application pending, you've got your one under 18 with your threes where they haven't actually got a tax file number and there's the pension benefit. These are required because your tax file numbers are actually validated by the system. All right. So when you actually have your Pay details area, you will need to make sure that you have actually got a payment summary type selected on each employee. And as you can see, this is the pay details screen. It is the third screen across after your standard pay um, information that you actually have set up with already in place. And it's just ensuring that you have a proper, a correct start date, a payment summary type selected, and the other thing is if that person is actually no longer with you, that you have a valid end date. Okay, now with pay item liabilities, if you need to make a change to any of the categories along the way, especially now with the ATO categories for um, single touch payroll, 
there is the opportunity to, to update pay histories with these pay item categories, with these categories. So if you make a change to, for instance, the ATO categories along the way because you've actually had a problem with um, Um, opportunity, if you have to make changes, you can go to this action, update pay history, and it will do it for you. Okay, now payment summaries. As you have been sending out your payslips, payment summaries will actually go out in a similar fashion. To make sure that that occurs, you have to have your above email address attached, and this will automatically have filtered through from your employee record, or if you choose to have had a secondary email address here, you can enter a secondary email address here, and this is quite often um, useful for um, staff who have left, because they won't be necessarily using a company email address anymore. And as a reminder, with single touch payroll, um, you will not be required to be sending any payment summaries out to your employees. They, that will all happen via your finalisation to the ATO, which then gets transferred to their my.gov my account, which that the employee individually can go to that website and download the actual um, payment summary information. Right. When you start having single touch payroll, there's key things that you will have to make sure that you are handling in a controlled manner. If now the new new version has a better termination, employee termination section, it allows for ETPs and recording of terminations. This area, what I'm going to do is actually prepare a separate um, webinar where we can go through this in more detail so that everybody is aware of what's going, what, the, what the system will be capable of for terminations. Just be, bearing in mind that there, are, there will be um, ATP categories available to be set up and the um, other area will be to make sure that the default ATO reporting category has been selected the correct way. I'm going to get on to the fringe benefits tax shortly, but as you can see, I've got some, there's some um, set up codes, set up pay items also that will be for fringe benefits tax, which will also be um, part of the reporting tax, ATO reporting categories as well, specifically for fringe benefits tax. All right, the ETP pay items. You can see here that there are taxable and tax-free pay item categories. Um, you can call the pay items whatever you actually want to call. And what I have also done, we'll go into this uh, actually. You can set up custom tax rates for them. So you'll set up, say, taxable 32%, taxable 49%. Um, for the ETPs and they'll end up being reportable as it needs to for single touch payroll. Within the single touch payroll, as I mentioned, when before actually sending out um, stuff up to the ATO website, you will have the opportunity to actually validate your information and it will be listed here anything that needs to be uh, corrected before you before you do your submission, um, so you don't have to be concerned that um, you haven't got something completely correct because it will do a validation and then you'll have the opportunity to go and make the changes and corrections and then revalidate and go around the circle again. All right, fringe benefits tax. Um, just 
as far as it's concerned, you will need to have pay items set up. The other thing will be is to add a pay group, which will be an annual pay group with the appropriate pay dates, and process a pay run for the fringe benefits tax. The important thing is that when you have an FTP site, you will need to make sure that your pay period end date is no later than the 31st of May of that year, because that is the end of the fringe benefits tax period. Your physical pay date, though, has to be in a current pay period when you process it, because when you send things to the ATO, it is based on current pays. The, for non-STP sites, you can have your physical pay date also as the 31st of March, that's dated and it will not have any problems because it will still report on your payment summary, uh, so it will be needed to report it that way on your payment summary um, to show up because its payment summaries are based on physical pay date as to what is going to show up for fringe benefits tax. But they're the key things to remember. Everybody has to make sure that their pay period end date for the pay run is before the end of May, or March. Non STP sites, you want to make sure your physical pay period end date, yeah, physical pay date is also the end of March. For single touch payroll, it will have to be a current pay for your physical pay date. All right. Depending on how you're going to be actually submitting your fringe benefits tax, you will need to set up the appropriate pay items with the appropriate variations of the fringe benefits reporting tick boxes. There are four ways you can tick it. I'm not sure with the exempt whether the gross stuff and the non gross stuff is necessary, but that's, that's some decisions that you guys need to make to ensure that you have done it the way you need to do it. And there's just some guidelines that probably will need to be read to make sure you're doing it the right way um, with the right tick boxes um, based on the ATO guidelines. All right. French benefits tax, as I said, you will set up, set up the pay items and you will also set up a pay group. And depending on the actual um, single touch payroll or not, you've got your period end date set up as well in here. The pay group also be um, a pay default you can select as NA, pregnancy is annual and you don't need to have any days or um, hours per day, et cetera, entered into it. You'll do a pay run, and then at the end you'll do your final pay to actually complete the um, whole process for your fringe benefit tax. All right. As far as the completion of your pay after you've done your last pay, you've got your last pay to be done, which will be sent off to the ATO, this is for in the touch. You'll do your reconciliations and we'll go into that. And then all you then at the end of that is you'll send your finalisation event to the ATO. At the moment, you're going to have your last pay event. You're going to do your reconcile with your payroll. Where it's got a little bit more steps to be done is that you've got to create a batch, approve it, distribute your payment summaries, and send it to the ATO. So it's very much like if you were doing a pay run or a um, superannuation or any of those things where you've got to, you create a batch, check your batch, get it approved, print your documents, and then finalise, send off 
the stuff to the bank or to the tax office or to those occupies for um, the actual payments. Okay, so there is, as you can see, you've got a single touch payroll section now in the next version once it's been all switched on by us. Um, and you've got your payment summary section also. So we're concentrating here on your, the payment summary section. You've got your batch to create, and this is the screen that you've created your batch. It gives you a summary of the different types of payment summary types, and most of you will have individual non-business. It also gives you um, a breakdown of the various categories that you have um, that would be on your payment summary, including the column for the reportable fringe benefits. From this, if you want to, you can send it out to Excel. There is no print report printing as such of this screen, but you can go out to Excel and you can save the file. If you need to make adjustments at this stage, um, you can make changes and and then revise. You go through your process like you would normally with your um, manage batch, batch summary stuff. All right. And then when you get into your process summary, that is going to actually do the printing and send it to the ATO. Now, the fun part, checking everything. I will go today into checking your postings, looking at your entitlements and provisions, and um, looking at your superannuation reconciliations. I do have a lot of writing in this and we will actually have a look at reports. Um, the, the problem is that unless you understand the concept, uh, it's going to be a bit more complex to um, go through and do the steps. The main thing is, is that you have two areas that you need to focus on. One is the postings matching the payroll, and the third data within the payroll is doing what it needs to be doing as well. Areas that you go to overall have to be reviewing are your postings to the GL, looking at work cover and that it ha um, has been doing the provisions correctly, checking that your leave entitlements are balanced and have been going through, same with your superannuation, and also looking at your payroll tax provisions and that, um, that's been um, doing its journals as it needs to. So you're going to take reports, compare the results, investigate your discrepancies, do your corrections, and then go back and make sure that you've made any changes to your setup um, so that in the future you are um, going to be getting it in a, doing it better. Key things to making sure that your postings are doing the right thing are that you actually have your pay items and general register purposes inserted correctly, that you have your posting classes set up with the GL um, purposes and the GL code as you want it to be, and that the correct posting classes are being set on employee. That is going to be the basis for making sure that everything is going through to deal as it needs to.
For general ledger, you're going to basically be checking your pay history inquiry, I'm sorry, for the GL posting. You're going to be checking your pay history inquiry and comparing it to your general ledger batch details report. Other reports are also available to help you um, investigate that information. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this and let's have a look at What I've got here is we have the pay summary by employee. Um, sorry guys. I get caught up on this as well. Uh, we've done, we've slowly worked through writing another, a number of extra reports so that we can um, manage better the payroll and so supplementary things like some extra reports and also some extra generic inquiries we've put in place to help along the way with um, reconciling and doing your day-to-day -day business. So. What I've got is a this report here, yes, great, which allows you to look at your pay summary details in an employee order for a given period of time. Now, where, where are, what you need to be looking at is look at the period that you're actually going to be reviewing. And in most cases, all you'll need to do is just pick up a start and end pay run and in general, for this purpose, you don't want to be including any of these. Because they're, they're processed. They're things that they're um, pay runs that are not fully complete. So this report allows you to actually look at each person and look at the pay runs that um, have been completed for them for the given period of time. And this will help you with some more detail of what's going on. Now, pay history, the main one that we wanted to look at for um, the reconciliation. Pay history. Pick your dates. Which one to reconcile. Oh, sorry. Okay. Pick your dates for your pay runs and your people and export it out to Excel and and work with it. It does give you some totals at the top of the page for what you've actually 
um, so the range that you've selected, but you might want to actually have a total for the various components, whether it's your PAYG, gross or tax, um, gross taxable deductions, net pay, your super. So it allows you to actually um, have a look at totals that you would expect more than likely out in your general ledger. And then we also have the other report that you can look at will be the general ledger batch details report. This is actually looking at the general ledger and the actual general ledger batches that have gone. So this is actually on the financial side of the system, but it allows um, companies where the payrolls have been Restrict, uh, where the finance area is restricted to payroll employees, they still have an opportunity to look at um, general ledger transactions um, without having to go over to the finance area. Uh, and it also uh, restricts the account straight away to the payroll account. So, you want to actually look at balances within the payroll system and balances within the general ledger system or in finance system. And if you haven't had um, journals turned on for a while or if you haven't put opening balances in, then you may get a variation um, to your um, two reports and you have the opportunity to, then to investigate um, where it's gone wrong. Well, more than likely, you'll have to do some adjustments in the general ledger. So you've done pay runs and pay runs will show the transactions because you've paid your staff. But from there you have other reports and until really we get a specific instance of somebody needing reconciliation, it's going to be difficult for me to go through this webinar through various um, variations of reconciling, but that's, that's the start of the reconciliation. We can start looking. All right, leave retirement. Within the payroll system, the only time the general ledger is being um, impacted is when there's a pay run being processed. Opening balances that we put in at the start of your payroll life. Any adjustments you've gone and put in along the way um, to your leave, those things will not have actually been reflected in the general ledger. So on a regular basis, you should be actually reconciling and comparing, making sure that your entitlements within the payroll area are actually in line with the provisions you've been making. Terminations at this point also, when you're clearing out your leave, you will also have to have been posting uh, doing journals to see so clearing the leave entitlement balances and also doing clearing journals. So you need to look at total Leave and factor back and I'm multiplying it out by the um, rate of your employees and reviewing that the provision accounts actually have movements to the same value. Hope that makes sense. Right. So you have the leave table to for reconciling the leave balances. We have the leave entitlements area and also the payroll pay runs. There's two main um, reports that you can use to try to see if there has been um, adjustments entered. One is you're going to look at if there has been adjustments actually entered into the system in the period that you're looking at. And the other one just looks at um, multiplying out the amount of leave um, times the rate to see what is the value that should be, that should be in the provision account. 
and then you will need to also be making sure that you have accounted for the adjustments. Right, let's try the Let's jump it to make it this way. All right. This entitlement history. Entry date ranging. That's not getting right. Let's do that. What I would recommend with this is to go and you'll leave type by leave type. And what you're looking for in this initial scan is for anywhere where there's a pay ID, I've taught this, just bear in mind that I'm looking at something which is your current period. Very much look for um, pay ID, so a pay ID column where there is, has been no pay ID actually entered because they are adjustments. They are where you've gone in and used the entitlement adjustments button to either put in opening balances or to um, make adjustments along the way. So your number one is you're going to make note of anywhere where there has been a, a um, blank pay run. Depending on how big a data you're going through, you can export it out to Excel and just sort it by pay run. I actually can do that now. Sort by pay run ID, uh, sort. Yes, okay. So there's some entries that have been put in here which are the opening balances. So you've got to make sure that even though this isn't going to show up on our other report, that you actually have this and accounted for and will use this figure to make sure that these are also in your general ledger. The other report that I have actually prepared is this Enhanced Entitlement Detail Report. This report actually will give you a look at the employee's wages and give you some multiplying multipliers so that you actually have a number There's actually a rate of what their pay rate was at the time and what their, the value of that pay rate was based on multiplication. So this will tell you um, what pay runs have gone through and what rate they went through at. And you can use this to get a um, financial amount as well for what goes into the GL for posting. These will have had direct postings to the GL for these transactions. It's a good way to check that, that, that what rate of pay people have been paid at. So a combination of those two reports will help you look at what your total is in your provision account. Putting in correcting entries. If you have found that you need to fix the actual accrual amount for that employee within the actual payroll area, you will need to add an entitlement adjustment. What you need to make sure that you're doing, this is, how, this is not opening balances, this is just day-to-day -day adjustments. Be careful how you're calculating the lead when you've got days and hours. So the amount you're putting into the amount box will be dependent on um, whether you're doing this on days or hours. The dollar value will be the, your, their current pay rate times the um, 
the number of hours you or days you've actually calculated here. And you will tick that accrual adjustment box. Now, remind you again, this does not do a geo posting. If you need to actually make a major change to someone's leave, you have to also bear in mind that the system will take it into consideration when it's working out, have, have, has the employee reached their targeted 152 hours in the year or not, because the system will stop calculating um, provisions for annual leave if, if the employee has arrived at their 152 hours near the end of the year. There are ways of avoiding that, um, turning off capping, but the majority of people will have caps turned on. The other area that you may need to do correcting entries will actually be to do journal entries between your leave expense account and your provision account. Superannuation. I'm expecting you will have at least two GL super accounts, one which is your expense account and then you'll have a super payable provision account. You'll be making your payments out of that super payable account and along with that what will happen is because you're using a, a clearing account credit up, that the clearing account creditor will actually be pointing to the super payables account within its setup for the control account. You should have at least, well, at least you should have your super guarantee pay item set up. And if you've got any salary sacrifice, um, if it's pure salary sacrifice, not tax, then you also have that set up. And, and you'll have that actually start pointing to your um, pay, super payables general ledger purpose account, not the expense account. This money is actually the employee's money that you're actually transferring to a super fund on their behalf versus the superannuation guarantee, which is the company's money that's being paid, which is that's why it's got an expense account set to it. Your reconciliation will again be in a similar fashion as we did for the leave, which will be looking at the movement of your provision account and the movement of the superannuation transactions and comparing the two to make sure that the balance of both, both areas is what you're expecting. And there are some reports there again, which you can actually have a look at to uh, get you what you're, hope, what you're doing as a comparison. All right, so if we have a look at superannuation transactions, It looks very much like we just looked at your leave, the leave history. We're picking the date range. And again, you can export this out to Excel. So it tells you the um, employee's um, fund name as well and how much was transferred to their account. And you have an opportunity of looking at things fund by fund. Yeah. But I think the main thing will be either to look at this employee by employee if you're doing an individual reconciliation or if you're doing a, a period of reconciliation back to the general ledger, then you're going to be um, just running this for your given period and comparing it to your Super account, making sure that you're not 
actually um, that you're excluding any payments that have come out. Export out to Excel, let you do your totaling and resorting if you want to. All right, now, as I said, work cover really is just um, a way of creating a um, provision. It's moving things from an expense account to a liability provision account, ready for you to make payments. And you, ha yeah, you have a choice of whether you actually just set your work cover rate to um, 0% and not worry about having the system doing journals for you or you can do these um, provisions. And everything is based on what you have set up in your power and liability account, what you, boxes you've ticked. There is a payroll tax area within the system. Um, it does vary very much um, company to company based on whether they're local Queensland payroll tax or external. So that's an area that we can look at individually if you want to make the system uh, utilise the system fully, but the majority of people who have been um, using it to create a provision journal and then just making payments out of that separately and not running through the full payroll tax process. That's pretty much the end of what I wanted to cover today. Um, information is available on the Education Centre, which is a button which you can go to via your um, payroll system. The other thing also is it, on there there are user guides and there are these white papers for single touch payroll. And I've been working on quite a bit of um, the wikis which I'll be distributing out to um, the sites very shortly once they're fully finalised. And as I've been having them, I've been working on actually updating people's sites with, the, with these wikis to help them along the way. So here we go, here's our help uh, education centre. And here there's white papers, there's release notes, and they're the main areas. And there's a number of videos and um, things as well that are available to you. So you should all have access to this Wellington People Process Articles. And this is where I'm working at the moment for you um, pretty much um, there for you to ready go and they take you to either more information or the actual forms that you want to go to. So I can click on that and have a look at the report I was talking about and run it if you want to. And if you want more details about the report, you can come in and actually look at the information, basic information about that particular report. So this I will be sending out to you guys really soon, um, in the next day or so, as I go through your site. Um, and I have more information also here for, uh, where are we? Mm -hmm. oh, end of year. Okay, end of year. And kind of summary. Right. There's a fair bit of information already. If there's a lot of information already within the mile based user guides, then I just point, point you to that. Or if you need more detail um, of very important stuff, I also have got links. So try, try and make use of this um, and see how you go. So here's all about the setting up a huge benefit tax. Try and make use of it and see how you go. And if there's areas that you want, you feel 
are important and not covered, then I can look at putting future things in for you. All right, and here's the usual um, blurb at the end to say, go and talk to your bad agent or tax agent or accountant to seek advice in relation to um, areas we've touched on. That's just reminding our website. All right, thank you, everybody. Um, that's the end of the actual presentation. If you have any questions, um, you know, it'd be great if you could actually just send them through on the chat and I'll try and answer them for you at the moment. Anybody got any questions? Okay, um, thank you for attending. Uh, feel free to send me some in, an email through if you wish to actually um, discuss something individually and um, log a support call if you need some um, training or covering areas as well. And I'll see you next time we meet here again. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.